uh, at Liberty Baptist Church right now, and uh, by we, I mean myself and uh, Brother Vince, and uh, we are glad <laughs> to be able to be here holding down the fort, but Amen. wherever you are uh, at home today, watching yeah. from your phone, your laptop, plugged in your, uh, into your television, uh, blessed by uh, what we have going on yes. here today. Just a few prayer requests for you that I'd like to share uh, with you this morning. First of all, uh, if you would pray for uh, an evangelist that some of you are familiar with, his name's Kenny Baldwin. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenny Baldwin uh, is uh, actually, it was announced by his church a few days ago that he uh, has contracted coronavirus. And so he is doing better now. But if you pray for him, and I would also add that uh, the news media in the area there uh, really did a hatchet job on their church uh, okay. for that and made a real big deal about that. So if you pray not just for Brother Kenny, but also for their ministry in general uh, as they navigate through all of the media yes. scrutiny they're having, unfairly, I would say, yeah. and all those things, I know it would be appreciated. And then back here at home, if you would pray this morning uh, for my wife, Diane. Uh, she was going to be here playing the piano this morning. She is not really struggling with her fibromyalgia right now and having some difficulty. Mm. Her doctor actually ordered her to bed rest uh, a few days ago. And uh, right now, that's not easy to do. And mm. so if you would pray for her, uh, I know that it would be greatly appreciated. And so uh, if you have a prayer request, you're more than welcome to share them right there uh, on the comment section. I can see that there are comments being given right now, but seeing as I'm standing 10 feet away from my phone, my eyes aren't that good. So I can't tell what you want me to pray for. I'm hoping you're saying that Everything's going well and the connection's good because otherwise I, I don't know when I'll find out Amen. around you. Uh, but I hope everything's well for you as well as it can be under the circumstances, as well as it can be with uh, this virus that's out there. I hope that you're safe. Yes. I pray that you, yes. your family, uh, all your loved ones are safe. Mm -hmm. uh, I pray that uh, you have no issues with work or anything like that, that you're safe while you're at work, if you are still able to work. Uh, whatever it is, we pray for God's best for you uh, and those that you That's love. Right. Well, let's go ahead and get started with a word of prayer this morning, and then uh, we're going to sing a duet, and uh, we hope that you uh, <laughs> join in with us at home. And I'll say this, uh, we don't have bulletins today. Well, I mean, we do, uh, but I can't print them and hand them to you, all right? So if you want to, uh, you can go onto our website, and you can see that we're under the uh, LBC Media tab. There is the weekly bulletin, and that is today's bulletin. Normally, we do the week before for folks who aren't you know, able to come to church, but today's bulletin is available. It also has the songs we're going to sing this morning and tonight. So you can grab that, print that out. Uh, if it's a little too late to print that out, which it may be if you're just trying to find it now, mm -hmm. you can just know in the future, as long as you're doing live streams, we'll have those available for That's you. Right. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Yep. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this morning, and it is... Good to be in your house, Lord, and I say that, Lord, not as a, a flippant thing or a trite thing, but, Lord, as I consider that Brother Vince and I are here, but there are many who we pray are watching from their homes, yeah. who are gathering around with their loved ones and gathering around a phone screen, an mm -hmm. iPad screen, a computer screen. Lord, it's very humbling to be able to think that there are those who are willing to gather uh, in this virtual realm. And we certainly thank you for the technology that allows us to do this today. Amen. But I pray that you would be with the stream itself, that it would be smooth, that folks would be able to hear yep. the clear communication of the service and the gospel. Yep. I pray for those who might be tuning in this morning who are not uh, normally inclined to come to church, mm -hmm. but maybe with all that's going on in this world, they want to know more about yes. how to get peace and maybe they'll just click on this this morning and watch for a while. I pray for them as well. I pray for those who are watching that don't know you as Savior. Yeah. And I pray that they would come to understand this morning the need that they have to repent of their sins That's and to call upon you as Savior. Right. Lord, be with this service this morning. Lord, we know that as the body gathers that the church is not a building. We say that so often, but yet it's never more real than today. Amen. The church is, all of us as believers, gathering together with our hearts this morning, doing That's the very best we can under the circumstances. Be with us. Bless us, Lord. I pray that you give me wisdom uh, as I uh, give the word today and help me to have the right words to say. Uh, we do ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing, first of all, Victory in Jesus this morning. Uh, hymn 341, that doesn't mean anything to you, but uh, it's on uh, your uh, bulletin this morning if you want to sing. And I encourage you, sing out with your family. We're going to try to sing yeah. songs that you are familiar with, maybe even if you don't have the words in front of you, so that I hope this will be a help. But hymn number 341, let's sing it out together. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary 
To save a wretch like me, I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me so with his redeeming blood. Praise God, he loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me, sold with his redeeming blood. Praise God, he loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory. A song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me, sold with his redeeming blood. Praise God, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love, he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Well, good singing. Very, very good. And, uh, well, you may remain seated. All right. Thank you so much. Stay on your couch. Uh, don't don't worry about it. So we'll sing again in just a moment, but just a few announcements for you and some things that are going on. As far as the church calendar, well, we got nothing to announce right now uh, because you and I both know that from day to day, we don't know what's going on right now. We are going to continue our normal service schedule, and that is 5 o'clock this evening. We'll be back in the Word as well as on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Uh, we are live streaming these here from the church at the moment as long as we are able to. Uh, but we do encourage you to stay home. Our building is closed. And so at this time, we are thankful for the technology yeah. to be able to do this. But at the same time, uh, we are not holding public services here uh, at the church other than those who are here to just make sure that uh, things are running smoothly as far as the technology and the coffee and all those kind of things. And so we're glad to be able uh, to have this venue to be able to do that. Now, I will say this as a way to help us communicate with one another better and just to be able to stay encouraged in the word. Starting tomorrow, I'm starting a daily devotion called Liberty at Home. Now, there are going to be short devotionals, and they're just going to be about five to ten minutes long. That's my intention. Of course, when a pastor says that, well, good luck. But we're going to try uh, our best to be able to do that. Sure. Something that's short, uh, something that's for the day, something that's going to give you a thought. And uh, we're going to be going over one of the Psalms in uh, detail over the next several days or weeks, however long that is. And so we certainly encourage you to get that, to watch, to share yes. on your page. Yes. You'll get all of that on the Liberty Baptist Church Facebook page. Excellent. And let me remind you, as you all already know, because you're watching this stream now, you are going to be able to access everything through Facebook, whether you have the Facebook uh, accounts or not. Uh, some folks have asked me, well, Pastor, I don't have Facebook, so uh, how am I going to be able to log in or access? And that's a fair question. Uh, but the best way to access Facebook, uh, our church Facebook page, if you don't have Facebook, is to really go to our website, yeah. which is mylibertybaptist.org. You go there and you'll see that there's a tab at the top that says Facebook live stream. You can click on that. Mm -hmm. You go to the bottom, there's kind of a scrolling list of the latest posts. You can click on any of those. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go into Facebook, it's going to ask you to sign up if you don't uh, already have an account. 
Uh, you just continually tell it no <laughs> several times until it gets the message, yeah. and then you'll be able to access everything on the page just as everyone else will because it is a public page. So mm -hmm. I hope that you'll join us for Liberty at Home uh, coming up. It's a Monday through Friday series, so you'll get them on Monday through Friday. They're not going to be live streamed in mm -hmm. general uh, unless maybe once in a while we do a, a special episode <laughs> of it. Uh, but otherwise, they're going to be recorded and placed on there. Sometimes you watch, and I hope we help and a blessing for you. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you tomorrow. Yes. Now, at this time, uh, we would normally collect the tithes and offerings, and so... Uh, since Vince and I passed the plate back and forth to each other here, uh, we are completed with that task. However, I do want to remind you that although, all joking aside, uh, we cannot have tithes and offerings collected this morning, I do want to remind you that although we are doing our best to be able to be good stewards with God's money and really putting a freeze on as much purchasing and spending as we can at the moment, there are many costs at a church like ours that are just fixed. They are not right. going to change no matter what. And so I want to encourage you, as God enables you, as God allows you to continue in your job, and God allows you to be able to have financial means given to you, mm -hmm. I want to remind you to be faithful in your tithes and offerings. I know that could be difficult uh, during a time like this, but we want to make sure that God's house is taken care of and that we're in a strong financial footing uh, so that when this... Uh, is over, uh, mm -hmm. we can make sure that we move ahead as well as making sure uh, that we are faithful in paying our bills and keeping everything current yes. here. Yes. So if you are a member of Liberty Baptist Church, uh, we're going to be sending you some instructions over the next few days and some offering envelopes mm -hmm. as how to better do that. There are some who already told me they're sending some of those tithes uh, here to the church, the church mailbox, and certainly that is fine. Mm -hmm. But we're going to give you some further instructions this week to help and to streamline that because we're trying to make plans. We don't know how long this is going to be. It could be a couple weeks. It could be much longer. Yeah. So we want to have a process in place that works for everyone. Uh, we do not offer online giving. Uh, there are many churches that do. I certainly have nothing against that mm -hmm. if they do. Mm -hmm. I found for us, one, uh, we tried it the first year that we were here. Nobody used it. Mm -hmm. And I know that maybe that would be different now. But one of the reasons I don't like using online giving is many of those platforms usually take anywhere from 3 to 5% and keep it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so for us, uh, we don't want to give thousands of dollars if we can avoid it to credit card companies, processing companies, things like that. We want you to know that when you give to Liberty Baptist Church, 100% of it comes to this ministry, mm -hmm. and then it goes back out 100% to missionaries or whatever designation it goes to. Good. And so you can send that uh, to 800 Washington Street here in Easton, uh, or otherwise, if you just want to hold on to that until we give you those instructions this week, certainly uh, we'll be glad to do that. But whatever God lays in your heart, we sure will be thankful. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and sing one more time. And so we're going to sing, Are You Washed in the Blood? Uh, hymn number 40. Uh, I keep saying the numbers. All right. It's just a bad habit. It's not going to help you. Hymn number 40. Uh, are You Washed in the Blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be uh, you better
bedside table, wherever it is, grab your Bible and turn, if you would, to the book of James. James chapter 4 is where we'll be at this morning. Just a few reminders for you. Uh, I hope that as you watch the live stream, especially particularly if you're part of our church, uh, gather the family around. Of course, let's just do what we would do on a normal Sunday morning, and that is be together as a family uh, around the Word of God. Uh, if you're in the habit of taking notes, as many of our folks are, have those notebooks out. Be ready uh, to take note of service and uh, do everything that you can. Now, I understand right now that there's probably some pixelation issues I see here and there that uh, it looks like I might be cutting out just a touch. If that's the case, just well, hold on the best that you can. We'll reassess uh, how we do this here again tonight, if that's necessary. Uh, but as best we can, we're going to hold on here uh, to this live stream. And uh, if the quality goes down, well, that means you see less of me. And I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing, as all things considered. So uh, you might get a win-win there. And so uh, I hope uh, that you will just be an active part of what is going on here today. It's easy to be passive. You're at home. You're on a couch. You're in an easy chair. It's just easy to kind of mentally disengage. And I think we all have to kind of retrain ourselves a little yes, bit. I'm yes. retraining myself right now to preach looking at a camera that's 10 feet away yeah. from me. And uh, you would have to kind of adjust the same. So I hope uh, that we'll just really get into God's Word. Because listen, we need it more than ever. Amen. With everything that's going on right now, with Amen. all that's swirling around us, with the world just going absolutely crazy, with yes. the panic that's uh, setting in, uh, and with the very real issues that are going on with the coronavirus. Yes. Friend, uh, mm -hmm. we need the Lord we need the word more now than we ever Amen. have before. So let's make sure we engage. And I'm going to encourage you, if you have a moment, uh, go ahead and share this on your page uh, right now so that uh, as this live stream is going, if you have friends, uh, family members who are mm -hmm. online, encourage them to come and to watch and to get something from God's word this That's morning. Right. You have friends and family, no doubt, uh, that maybe would never come to church, mm -hmm. but that will watch this morning from the comforts of their own home. So let's engage yeah. them. Yeah. And get them involved. And I will also say this as well. Uh, all of this is introductory. None of this counts as part of the sermon. So uh, mm -hmm. I get all. I reserve all my sermon time still. Uh, but uh, uh, I will say this. If you live in the Easton area and you've seen some of the advertisements we've had and encouraging folks. You've never been to our church before. I want to welcome you. Yes. And I hope that you will come to our church and visit us. Uh, when, well, things are a little bit better yeah, and uh, yeah. different here in this world, but you're certainly always welcome to come here to Liberty Baptist Church. Amen. We are in James chapter 4 this morning, and we're going to be outside of our normal series of diligently seeking him. We will get back to that, Lord willing, next week, but this morning I felt like it was important for us to uh, preach something a little bit different as well as address a little bit of the difficulty that we're going through right now. And the title of my message is this, People, wash your hands! Yeah, People, Wash your hands. Now, mm -hmm. over the last few days, like you, I ventured out of the house to attempt uh, to get some supplies. Now, we are fine. We've got what we need at home, so I'm not saying that we need anything. Please don't send anything. Yeah. Please don't send uh, toilet paper or anything like that. We're good. I promise yeah. you. Uh, we are doing just fine. Uh, but we made the mistake on Friday of uh, attempting to go to Costco, and uh, it seemed like things were going okay until we saw that the line was starting to wrap around the building. I think they're only letting a certain amount of people in at a time. Yeah. And we decided, no, well, we're not going to go there. Uh, but over the last few days, I, like you, have been trying to just get supplies here and there to make sure we bolster up uh, what we already have. Mm -hmm. And some of those difficult-to-find items I have been able to find. A lot of places seem to have toilet paper right now. It seems like even if it's not a lot, there's something there. It may not be your preferred brand. Uh, it may not be your preferred type uh, that you like. Uh, but there's something there, and it's certainly preferable. To the alternative, uh, which, well, anyway, moving on, uh, I've been able to find uh, things like Lysol, uh, bleach, those kind of cleaning supplies are out there. Mm -hmm. There's even, for the most part, milks, eggs, and bread. Uh, yep. uh, you know, all the old uh, blizzard staples yeah. uh, are still out there. Bread's a little hard to come by. It seems like there's not as many gluten allergies as there used to be. Uh, there's a lot of bread that's flying off the shelves right now, it seems like, but I've been able to find all these things. You know, the one thing that I still have not found over the last several weeks, I have not been able to find it, no matter what store I've been to, is hand sanitizer. Nobody's got it. Now, it's ironic that a lot of folks still have soap. The soap is still out there, but the hand sanitizer uh, seemingly is not. Now, listen, if you don't have hand sanitizer, may I remind you, it's okay. 
because old fashioned soap and water uh, still works well. Right. Twenty seconds right. under the, you know. But I understand the need and the desire to have uh, hand sanitizer. Why? Uh, because uh, we want to keep our hands clean, especially right now. Listen, I was at the Dollar Tree a few days ago. We got this nice new Dollar Tree uh, here at East. I'm a big spender, so I like uh, the Dollar Tree. Uh, that's date night at the Rivero House. No, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, uh, the uh, Dollar Tree is a, a is a great place. And I was there just a few days ago, and I kid you not, at least three different people asked the poor woman at the front counter if they had any hand sanitizer. Mm. I felt so bad for her. It's like, look, friend, it's, it's not here. It, it, and if it was here, you would know it, all right? Because you'd see this huge crowd right around where the sanitizer was. But everybody wants to keep their hands clean, maybe more so than we've ever really thought about it before. Mm -hmm. Now, why do we want to keep our hands clean? Well, it's simple. If you don't, you open yourself up for the possibility of an outcome that you weren't prepared for. That's right. If you don't wash your hands, there's a possibility that you might get a virus. It doesn't even have to be the coronavirus. Yeah. It could be any number of things yes. uh, that could stick to your hands. All of a sudden, you touch uh, your eyes, you touch your mouth, you yeah. touch your nose, yeah. and that transfers. And before you know it, because mm -hmm. you haven't kept your hands clean, yeah. you're going to get yourself into a problem you had never imagined. Now, mm -hmm. consider this this morning, that... 2,000 years just about before you and I had to worry about hand sanitizer and soap and coronavirus, yeah. James talks about the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And he actually yeah. talks about a virus that is much more dangerous, that is much more debilitating than even the coronavirus. And that virus itself is none other than sin. Uh, right. You yeah. and I have a problem with sin and sin is a virus that yes. is small in fact it's so small it's microscopic yes. and it multiplies in ways we never realize and so James here in James chapter 4 this morning is going to encourage you yep. and encourage me by saying this people wash your hands yes and that's what we're going to look at this morning and by God's grace tonight as well James chapter 4 we're going to look at verse number 8 and 9 and 10 this morning it says this draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Amen. Now certainly we understand that we would focus this morning on these thoughts. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, yes, yes. and purify your hearts, E double minded. James is saying this there's something on your hands and there's something in your heart that is worse than any virus. And I'm not demeaning yeah. the significance of the coronavirus yeah. this morning, but may I tell you that what a coronavirus can take in the body, uh, that there are eternal consequences that come when we do not deal with the virus of sin yes, yes. that infects our life. Right. Well, let's pray as we continue this morning. Heavenly Father, I do just pray that you be with me and help me as I preach. The word, help me be faithful and true to your word. I pray once again that you just keep this uh, line of communication stable this morning so the folks who are at home can watch without any interruptions or any distractions. And help me to be able to preach appropriately your word uh, as it is found in your, uh, in your word. Uh, help me to give it out as it is to be given. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, our text this morning speaks of this age-old problem, one that is... Not new, like the coronavirus, but one that is old as time. So first of all, if you're writing these down, first of all, number one, we see that there's a viral problem. Number one, there's a viral problem. Now, yes, yes. we keep hearing this word virus, mm -hmm. virus. What is a virus? And think before the last few days, of course, we know viruses are things that make us sick. A lot of times we think of computer viruses. Mm -hmm. uh, we often think of things like that. We know that a virus isn't good, and in essence, it's not. The definition of a virus is this. It's an infective agent that is too small to be seen by light microscopy and is able to multiply only within the living cells of a host. Mm. So what's a virus? It's something that's very small. It's so small you're not going to see it with your eye and even uh, with a uh, light-powered microscope. Mm. But it's also something that needs something alive yeah. to thrive. Yes. It needs, could we put it this way, a host to make sure that it will grow and multiply and do those awful things that viruses like the coronavirus and other things do as well. Mm -hmm. President Trump just this week called the coronavirus an invisible enemy. Yeah. And certainly that's an appropriate tag for what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, soldiers on the battlefield are used to 
knowing that a combatant is across the other side of the field, yeah. knowing that they wear a different uniform, knowing how to recognize them if they see them on the field of battle. But friend, we're in a war today, but it's a war much different. Uh, the coronavirus has uh, no way of being identified in much the same manner as a combatant on a battlefield. Mm -hmm. It's invisible, but yet we war just the same. Yeah. Uh, why? Because if we do not wage war against this virus, if we do not wage war against this, uh, it could have a greater victory than we want it to have. That's right. We want it to have no victory. Exactly. We want it to have no quarter. But yet we understand that if we do not take measures in this invisible warfare that is taking place, mm -hmm. uh, we understand that coronavirus could have even more devastating effects than it's already having. See, James tells us, though, here in our text, that we have a viral problem in our spiritual lives. That's right. It's one that's too small to see yep. and that multiplies within the living cells of a host. Mm -hmm. That problem is sin. Yes. And that problem is threefold this morning. So again, if you're writing these down, number one, we have a viral problem. Letter A, we have a problem with our hands. Yes. This morning, the Word tells us in verse number 8 that you and I have a sin problem here with our hands. Now listen, yeah. we've been told this a lot, haven't we? Wash our hands because, like I said, you might end up touching your face. You might end up touching uh, the eyes or whatever. Uh, and listen, isn't it hard? You know, people are telling you not to touch your face, and it seems like the more they tell you, the more you want to touch your face, yeah. like every little inch. And I feel kind of right here if I want to just touch, but I know that I'm on camera and I really shouldn't do that right now. Uh, but the more they tell us not to, the more the natural tendency is to just want to, yeah. you know, and you got to stop yeah. yourself yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, from touching your face because why? Our hands can be carriers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, we don't know it. I mean, it's not like if the coronavirus is on your hand, it's lit up. Uh, like a neon sign or it's mm. lit up like a Christmas tree. Mm. Uh, you could be a carrier of infection. Listen, any type of infection, any kind of sickness, yeah. Yeah. you could carry it and not even realize that it's on you. So mm. what do you do? You wash your hands. Yeah. Uh, you make sure that when you go to the home, you wash your hands. Mm. You make sure that you get to your destination, you wash your hand. Mm. If you happen to have sanitizer when you're out, by the way, I wouldn't use too much of it. I'd be careful in how much you use because you end up drying out your yeah, hands and all right. kinds of other issues. Right. But at the same time, if you're in a situation that necessitates you using it, use it. Uh, if you're not able to get to soap and water. Why? Because you don't want to be carrying that virus yeah. on your hands. Yeah. Now, our first problem with sin that James talks about here in our text is that there are things that we touch on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, now, these things that we touch, maybe not necessarily with our hands, but with our lives. Look, there's sin that's all around us. Oh, yeah. And we've got to make sure that we don't get involved with it mm. and become carriers in our own lives. That's Listen, right. you right. realize when it says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, it's talking about the things that we come in contact with every day that are sinful. He says this, wash yourselves of them. Yes. Get them out. They're contaminants. Yeah. You don't want them in your life. Listen, be careful about the entertainment that you consume. You're at home a lot right now. There's a lot that you can watch on television. There's not a lot you should be watching on television right now. There's temptation to watch things and to binge watch things that maybe you never watched. Hey, you know what James is saying? Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Be careful the things that you touch. The places we go, we've got to be careful. Now, here's the thing. Right now, the places you go are probably the grocery store, and that's it. Yep. But in general, listen, we've got to be careful to cleanse our hands of some of the places that we go where sin is prevalent and where sin is yep. swirling around us so that we don't put ourselves in a situation. Why? Because it's a contaminant. That's it's a right. contaminant. It's a virus that can uh, uh, ruin our lives. Uh, the people that we hang around with. Now, right now, you're not hanging around with anybody. Yep. But there are some friendships, there are some relationships that you might have right now in your life that are sullying your hands. I'm not saying not to be friendly to people. I'm not saying that we shouldn't uh, be pleasant to people. Because, yeah. friend, we have to get to know people so that we can win them to Christ. Amen. But the same thing, you and I both know that there are people that might be having an influence on your life, and you need to cleanse your hands of yeah. them. You need to say, you're not going to have influence on me anymore because I serve the King of Kings Amen. and the Lord of Lords. Amen. And listen... The works that we do, the things that we do on the outside, they contaminate us yep. if we're not careful. Yep. Just the daily works, the things that we go through. Yeah. I was driving here down 138 a couple days ago uh, with Diane, and uh, there was someone who was driving. And I'm trying to be careful in how I say this uh, because this is being recorded, and I want to say it in a way. Uh, I can't take it back once this goes out. This is, you know, it's online. It's forever. Uh, but this person was having some difficulty driving. Uh, in a safe and sane manner. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and uh, 
there's an area right near the church where two lanes become one. Uh, and there's not really a whole lot of warning. In fact, it's right in front of the place where we used to live. And I would work in the bedroom in the back of the house. And I would constantly hear people honking because it comes together very, very quickly. If you live in the area, you know exactly where I'm talking about. Well, this, this driver, and I'm trying to be careful not even to reveal the gender of the driver. Anyway, moving on. It had nothing to do with it. It's, I've got to be careful. It's recorded, but it really had nothing to do with it. And, and, uh, and not only cut in front of me, but then when I honk the horn, slam the brakes. Now, of course, my wife's back right now is not very good, and so that's not helpful to us. And then I honked the horn again, and she slammed the brakes again. And, uh, you know, I was thinking things, and, you know, the pastor or maybe a Christian in general ought not to think. But then we continue driving down the road, and we're trying to come to the church. And my wife notices that when we get closer to the church, that I'm slowing down. And she says, you're slowing down because you don't want that woman to see that you're pulling into the church. And I said, no, that's not true. And then I said, well... Okay, yeah, actually, that is true. Uh, because, I was, because I was angry about it. And I was not, listen, we can't control what people can do around us right now, especially right now. But you understand that I don't need to worry about her and her contamination. I got to worry and make sure that I'm not contaminating my own hands. That's right. That I'm acting in a way that's appropriate and becoming as a Christian. Right. And you and I, we can sully our hands uh, by the works that we do on the outside, whether yes. it's the things that we consume, the things that we look at, yeah. uh, the things that you are looking at on your phone, yeah. on your computer, on the television, the right. things that you listen to. Yeah. Friend, all of those things are contaminants. We have a problem with our hands. Yeah. But we also see that this viral problem is not just with our hands, but but it's also a problem with our hearts. Ah, that's good. Do you see what it says here? Look again in verse number eight. It says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, yeah, yeah. ye double-minded. So to cleanse the hands means to deal with the things that we deal with mm. on the outside. Deal mm. with them appropriately. Mm. Clean it up. But also says that there's a contaminant that lurks on the inside. That's right. That silent killer. That's right. You know what happens is that the things that we do on the outside, and we're going to see this, Lord willing, uh, in a little while. The things that we do on the outside are really a manifestation of what's already going on and taking place out of the inside. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Uh, none of the things that we do on the outside just automatically pop up on their own. It, there's a seed that germinates in the heart. That's and so what do we do? We cleanse our hands as sinners, but we also got to get to the root of the problem. Amen. Purify the heart. Amen. You and I both know there are folks who have heart disease and heart issues, a lot of those issues stem from what? Blocked artery. Yep. Yep. Now, it's amazing to me that a lot of times those blocked arteries, sometimes they have to do with the things that we eat. Sometimes it has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. I know and you know of folks who have had blocked arteries, who have had heart attacks, who never really did anything that you would make you think would put themselves at high risk if they yeah. ate good foods. Maybe they even exercised. But there was a silent, what could have been killer inside of them, mm -hmm. a blockage in the heart. Mm -hmm. And so what do they have to do? They have to come in and clean out the heart. Yeah. They usually uh, do an angioplasty. They put a stint inside to clean it up to make sure that the blood is flowing. Why? Because the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Right. And the heart right. has to be working in a way that's proper. The heart has to be working right. in a way that will give life. And friend, you and I understand that it's good to clean up the outside. Yeah. We need to. But if all we ever do is focus on the outside yeah. and we never deal with the deeper issues of sin, mm -hmm. bitterness, Anger, lying, malice, uh, all of these things that lie inside of us. If we never uh, uh, purify our hearts, then we have missed the issue that is at hand. Friend, you can't trust your heart. No. The Bible makes it abundantly clear that your heart is wicked. Yes, I'm pointing at you this morning. I know I'm pointing at you because I'm pointing at a screen. So I have to be pointing at you. But I also know this this morning. My heart's wicked too. That's right. Always. Why? Because I'm a person. Yep. We're peoples. Yep. And so because that, our heart is wicked. Listen to what the word says. Genesis 8, 21, God says, The imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And certainly the question begs a response. Yep. Who can know it? Proverbs 28, 26 says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Amen. That's Isn't tough that? talk. That's right. But that's Bible talk. That's right. But whoso walketh wisely... He shall be delivered. See, God calls on us to have a cleansed heart. The problem is, is that we have unclean hands. Yeah. 
and we have unclean hearts. But the problem is not just a problem with our hands, and the problem is not just a problem with our hearts. Mm -hmm. We also have, let her see, a problem with humility. Uh, we have good. a problem with humility. Now, go back to our text, and look at verse number 9. It says this, Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Now, Certainly, that doesn't sound like it fits with the rest of Scripture because maybe you just read that and you say, Pastor, doesn't God want us to be joyful? Mm -hmm. In fact, didn't Paul write a book, uh, the book of Philippians, that dealt with joy? Uh, when the answer to that is certainly yes, Paul wrote what I called in that series in Philippians that we taught on Wednesday night several years ago, Joy in the Jail Cell, mm -hmm. one of the greatest books of hope and joy yes. was in one of the deepest times of travail and sorrow in, in many ways right. of, of Paul's life, but yet he chose joy because of his relationship yeah. with Jesus Christ. So the whole balance of Scripture tells us mm -hmm. that the joy of the Lord is our strength. There's no Amen. doubt about that. But we also have verse 9 here that also is Scripture. So we ask ourselves, what's going on here? Is there a contradiction? Well, you and I both know that the Bible does not contradict itself. No. So we have to ask ourselves, why should we be afflicted? Why should we mourn? Uh, why should we weep? Uh, why should we have heaviness? Mm -hmm. And the answer is this. We must have those things in response. Yeah. To sin. Ah, that's good. We shouldn't be joyful about sin. That's right. We shouldn't celebrate sin. You know, I looked at the same news that you did over the last week with those spring breakers mm -hmm. uh, down in Florida. Mm -hmm. See, that's the idea here. You know, what are they doing? Uh, there's partying. Uh, they were they were uh, glorifying the gods of alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, of nudity, of immorality, of yeah. rock and roll. They were glorifying all yeah. those things, not caring about yeah. what the repercussions would be, not caring if they went home and gave who knows what to grandma and grandpa or anyone else. Yeah. Uh, they were flaunting the fact that they were proud of their sin. That's right. That's right. You say, well, Pastor, well, thank goodness. Uh, I'm in good shape because I haven't been to spring break since, uh, well, you know, don't give me the year, uh, whatever it is. Uh, but you and I both understand that humility, yeah. humility oh, yeah. has very little to do with just that type of situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's talk about where you and I are today. Are we humble yeah. over our sin? Yeah. Do we realize that we are sinners yeah. in need of a Savior? That, Absolutely. Are we able to admit, yes, my hands are unclean? Yeah. Are we able to admit, yes, my heart is unclean? Yeah. Maybe this morning you're watching. I don't presume that everyone that's watching this morning is a part of our church or maybe is even interested in God. Who knows? I have no idea. And maybe you this morning are saying something like this. Well, sure, that's what you say, Pastor. Sure, that's what you think. That's mm -hmm. uh, your opinion. Listen, understand this this morning. You don't have to humble yourself to me. Yeah. Who am I? I'm nothing but a dirty, rotten sinner just like anyone else. Mm -hmm. I'm just a mm -hmm. sinner in need of a Savior yeah. just like anyone yeah. else. You are required, and I am required to have humility before an almighty God. He is the one that requires that we have humility. That's See, right. we have to have clean hands, and we have to have a clean heart, yeah. but we also have to show humility as yeah. well because pride is a virus. Ah, praise Jesus. Yeah. Pride That's is a right. virus. That's the right. lust of the flesh, That's the right. lust of the eyes, yeah. and the pride of life. As yeah. I've been saying to our discipleship class on Wednesday night, yeah. pride is the summation of all sins. That is right. Because pride is me saying, I can sin, I can get one over on God, and I'll do what I want. I don't care what he says. Are you willing to humble yourself? Proverbs 3.34 says, Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he, God, giveth grace unto the lowly. Mm. This is retold of the New Testament. 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, be clothed with humility. Mm. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Mm. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, yes. that he may exalt you that's, in due time. And if you're still not sure what I'm talking about, go up to verse number 6. Yeah, you should still is. be in James 4. Yes. Look at what it says. Yeah. But God, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, that's what we just were talking about mm -hmm. in Proverbs 3.34, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. You and yeah, I yeah. have a problem with pride. And God says this, there's a virus yeah. that we've got to clean ourselves up from. Right. It's the virus of pride. That's it's right. the virus of a heart that's not right with God. Yes. And it's a virus that manifests itself with yeah. our hands doing things that we ought not to be doing. The hands is the outward life. It's not really yeah. just the hands. It's yeah. the eyes. It's the ears. It's the mouth. Exactly. It's everything that we do. It's where our feet go. It's when our hands touch. Yeah. It's everything. You have a problem, friend. Your problem is sin. If you're unsaved, right. your problem is a right. sin. 
uh, is sin and you need the Savior. If you are saved this morning, your problem is sin. And you need the Savior to not save you uh, uh, from your sins because you already have a home in yeah. heaven, but so that you can live the life. And the victorious Christian yes. life that yes. God has called you to live, we've yes. got a problem. And if we're willing to clean our hands a hundred times a day until yes. the skin's getting raw, you and yes. I better take serious, the more serious, eternal, weighty matter. Yes. And that's the problem of sin. Yes, that's So right. first that's of all, right. we see there's a viral problem. You say, wow, Pastor, I'm glad I tuned into this live stream. All I've heard about is how a rotten person uh, I am. I'm glad you have uh, encouraged me in this manner this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, if I was to just turn the camera off right now, mm -hmm. I would certainly say the message would be one that's disheartening. Mm -hmm. If I was to shut down the live stream, mm -hmm. and if I was to tell you to just go out there and do your best, mm -hmm. we'd know that there is, well, very little hope. I mean, we feel that right now, don't we? we? We look to the future. We hear about vaccines in the future. Yeah. We hear about medicines that could be used in the future. Yeah. Uh, we hear about these things, and they give us hope, but they seem so far away. Yeah. They true. seem so far off. When you hear about a vaccine and you're thinking 12 months, 18 months, you're yeah. thinking, how are we going to wait 12 months or 18 yeah. months? There's yeah. so little hope. We hear about malaria drugs that are being used, and certainly I'm hopeful about those things, but mm. we don't know. There could mm. be something that comes to pass of it, or nothing could come to pass. It's hope. It's something off in the future, and the Bible says it's hope deferred. Make it the heart sick. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know if it's going to happen or not, yeah. but could I tell you that I have good news about your and my viral problem with sin? The good news is that there's already a solution. It's already available. Mm -hmm. It's already been tested. Yeah. It's already been tried. Yeah. It's true. It's greater than anything you could ever imagine. Yeah. And that virtual solution, that virtuous solution, yeah. is repenting of our sins That's and right. calling upon Jesus Christ to save us. Right. Look at what it says. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Yeah. So Amen. what do you do? You say, well, it sounds like work salvation. No, 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 friend. You realize as you draw to God, yeah. he's the one that draws to you. Amen. As you call upon the Lord to save you, he is the one that does the saving. Right. There is no works here. Look at verse 10. Mm -hmm. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. I can't do anything but bring myself low. But as I bring myself yeah. low, what does it say in verse number 10? That he is the one that will lift you up. Listen, Amen. I can't lift myself up to heavenly places. Amen. But as I bring myself low, as I uh, show myself to be humble, the yeah. Lord is the one That's who right. lifts us up. The, one right. is, uh, the Lord is the one who shows us to be mighty and strong. Friends, Excellent. you yeah. cannot save yourself this morning of this problem. You cannot give yourself the antidote. Right. You cannot give yourself uh, the vaccine in and of yourself. You are not capable of it. You may say this morning, Pastor, I was baptized as a baby. Mm -hmm. Pastor, I went to confirmation. I went to CCD. Mm -hmm. I give to the church. Mm -hmm. I'm watching a live stream. Mm -hmm. I've been helping my neighbors by giving mm -hmm. them uh, uh, mm -hmm. food and by giving them toilet paper and all those mm -hmm. things. And certainly, uh, mm -hmm. some of those things are, are good things. Yeah. Uh, but I would say to you this morning that whatever you think is a good work, the Bible mm -hmm. calls filthy rags. Yeah. Because they're yeah. good works done with what? Tainted hands. That's right. Could you imagine if you had the coronavirus and you had a package of toilet paper that your neighbor needed and you, with those dirty hands, went and gave that package of toilet paper to the neighbor? Yeah. Well, they got toilet paper, but they got another gift they weren't oh, expecting. Yes. It wouldn't yes. be good. Mm -hmm. You realize that's what sin does, mm -hmm. is that it even taints our good works. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Good. It, it taints even our best works. So what do we do? We purify our hands. We cleanse our hearts. But we can only do that through the red blood of Jesus Christ Amen. that was shed on the cross. For Amen. whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, yes. uh, ye shall be saved. You and I, our only hope for salvation, our only hope, as Jesus told That's Nicodemus right. in John 3, of being born again, our only hope comes from Christ and from Amen. Christ alone. Would That's you turn right. your Bibles to Mark chapter 7? We're going to look at some verses here, and then we're actually going to pick up here again tonight. We're going to have a different message this evening, the same vein, same title, but we're going to pick up here tonight with a little bit of a different view. But I want to encourage you this morning. Are you afraid? Are you afraid of the future? Are you afraid of going out of your house right now? Are you afraid of going to the store? Are you not sure of what this world is going to bring? I'll be honest with you. All of us have some level of trepidation. Yeah, yeah. All of us feel at, uh, ill at ease. And uncertain yeah. at what's going on. Mm. But there's a difference between feeling uncertain and having fear. Mm. Because as a child of God, I know who holds tomorrow. Oh, 
Oh, yes. As a child of God, I know yes. who is in control. So good. And although certainly there are things that make me wonder, and certainly there are things that, 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 that cause me uh, to look around and, and ask God mm -hmm. why things are happening the way they are, not that he will necessarily answer. Job uh, asked God a lot of questions, yes. and Job uh, didn't really get a lot of answers. Uh, yeah. We may not have the answers today, but I know this. I may not know the answer to what's going on with the coronavirus. Yeah. I may not know the answer with what's going on with the government today, but I know the answer for how a sin-sick soul can be saved, and that answer has been and will always be right here in the Word of God, and it is Jesus Christ. Amen. You must repent of your sins yes. and call upon Christ to save yes. you today. And if you are saved, if you know Jesus Christ your Savior, mm -hmm. we got to do a hand check this morning. Sure. We've got to do a heart check. Yeah. We've got to do a humility check. Yeah. To make sure that we don't allow this infection uh, to come back. It may not take our soul because we're saved, but yeah. it can take our effectiveness. It can take our joy. It can take our testimony. Oh, Satan will take everything that he can take from you yeah. if we don't have clean hands, a clean heart, and have a humble spirit before the so Lord. Rude. But we're here in Mark chapter so 7, rude. verse number 1. We're almost done. Look at what it says here. It says, Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes. And of course, unto him is talking about Jesus here. And came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fell. Now, hold on a second here. Mm. Eaten with unwashed hands. Mm. Now, I wouldn't suggest that today. Mm -mm. Uh, before I eat something, I'm going to wash my hands. I'll tell you, I'm even at the checkout counter right now at the grocery store and eating you know, candy bars and stuff like that. I don't even want those right now. You know, all things. It's like, you know, I mean, that Kit Kat looks good. But it ain't worth coronavirus, so I'm not going to take it. It'll save me a little money, and I'm not going to eat it. It's fine. Why? Because, well, I have unwashed hands. Yep. Who knows who touched it had unwashed hands? Uh, yeah. But here's the issue here. The Pharisees found fault yeah. with this. Now, we're going to look at this in greater detail tonight, but they found fault. Let's continue. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Mm. And when they come not from the market except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of other tables. Now, we're going to look at this more tonight. When the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath the Sias prophesied of you hypocrites, for it is written that this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now that comes from Isaiah 29, 13. Mm -hmm. How be in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Here's the issue this morning. There's a lot you can do with your lips. But where's your heart? See, this is what Jesus told the Pharisees. Look, everyone, you know the Bible or not. You know the Pharisees? Not good. Yeah. Not spiritual. That's right. They look That's spiritual, right. but they weren't. They even look like they had clean hands on the outside. Mm -hmm. They seem to have mm -hmm. clean hands. But here is what he says. He says, this isn't just an issue of your hands. Where's your heart yes. today? Friend, good, good, have you good. ever called upon Jesus Christ to save you? Have you ever realized that you're a sinner, that you're in need of a Savior, yeah. that Jesus yeah. Christ is the only way? There Amen. is no other way. There is not enough Eucharist that yes. you can take. There is no Mass that mm -hmm. can help you. Mm -hmm. There is no church service that can help you. Mm -hmm. There is no anything that no. can help you other than calling upon Jesus yeah. Christ to save you and Him alone. Yes. I am the way, yes. the truth, and the life. Amen. And no man cometh unto the Father Amen. but by me. That excludes Buddha. That excludes yes. Muhammad. Yes. That excludes all the other gods, yes. so-called, little g, that are out there. It is Christ and Christ alone. It's yes. an exclusive gospel, Absolutely. but yet it is inclusive because it's a whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved gospel. Wow. You can Amen. be saved. But here's the question. Where's your heart today? Where's your heart? The unsaved, where's your heart today? If you are saved this morning, where's your heart? Mm. Are your hands clean? Mm. Is your heart clean? Do you have a problem with humility today? These are the questions we need to ask good. ourselves. Yes. And in a time that's trying, in a time that there's great difficulty, in a time where there seems to be no hope, mm. there is still hope in the word of God. Amen. There is still hope in the Savior. Praise I Jesus. encourage you, even if you are trusting in your religious background, mm. even if you're trusting in your knowledge of Christ, yes. that you heard of him, that you've heard Bible stories, right. it is so important that you trust Christ as your Savior 
and that you are born again trusting in nothing else. Absolutely. December 2nd, 1998, I had to realize that I could only trust in Christ alone mm. to call upon him to mm. save me of my sins. I repented. There was a turn. There was a change. It wasn't me working. Yeah. It was me saying, I don't want this life anymore. I want God and I want him alone. Oh, praise Jesus. Do you have that time in your life? Friend, I pray that you do. Yes. Well, what do we do? We see that there is a virtuous solution. Yes. The solution to our viral problem yes. is Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know the future of the coronavirus. Amen. I hope that it peters out and is done in the next mm. couple of weeks. Mm. That's what I'm praying for. Yes. I know that's what you're praying for, but yep. we don't know. Yep. But the much worse problem of sin has a solution that's available to you today. That's right. Reach out and take that free gift of salvation That's right. today. Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning and I acknowledge that there are some who are watching this live stream today who may very well not know you as Savior. And I pray for them specifically right now. Maybe they have a religious background. Maybe they're just confused. Maybe they're agnostic or atheist. Maybe they just never thought about it any of these issues before. But I pray that if nothing else, that the great difficulty of these circumstances that surround us will help bring their thoughts heavenward, help bring their thoughts to you. And Lord, I pray that you would be with those who do know you as Savior. I pray that you would help us all to realize that we need to keep our hands clean, our hearts clean, to remain humble, Lord, if it's important to keep our hands clean in a viral situation like the coronavirus, how much more damage can sin do to our lives? That's right. That's right. That's right. Help us to avoid it, to eschew it, to get as far away from it as possible. Yeah. Keep the hands and hearts clean. Yeah. And we can only do that by having a spirit of humility before you. Yeah. Thank you for this time. And I pray that you be with us as we gather again tonight. Yeah. And be for those souls who are confused, who are reaching out, who have difficulties, not knowing what to do. Help them to realize that the Word of God has the answers to the questions of life. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll say this this morning as we are ready to conclude. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you are not 100% sure that if you were to die from this earth today, that the next breath you took would be in heaven with the Lord, if you are not sure about those things, I want to encourage you to do a couple things. First of all, you can go on our website. There's a section that says, Why Jesus? You can go on there and find out more about what it means to be saved. But I would encourage you even more than that. Would you message me? Would you put a message in our Facebook inbox? You can email me directly, pastor at mylibertybaptist.org. You can call or text the church line, 508-565-8281. It will be our honor to be able to show you straight from the Bible what it means to be saved. If you have questions, don't wait. Don't hesitate. We want to be able to help you with these issues of life. I'm so honored to be able to have you uh, join us here today. I'll admit it is awkward to be able to preach in a manner like this, and uh, we're going to try to get better at it. We're going to do our very best. But uh, just the fact that you would sit down uh, there in your living room uh, ready to go, uh, we sure are thankful to have you with us. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you again uh, tonight uh, at 5 o'clock. We're going to be back in Mark chapter 7 and continue our thoughts about washing our hands and what it means for us particularly for those of us who are believers mm -hmm. and how we need to make sure that the Word of God is primary in everything we do in our life and not the commandments of men. We're doing that tonight at 5 o'clock. Hope you join us then. Until then, God bless you. Be safe, be healthy, and we'll talk to you soon.